the local. <laughs> yeah, that's a small change in the title. Uh, I had a discussion with uh, Jonutz, and we agreed that uh, it's not a local form theorem, it's the local form theorem. So I'll try to convince you of that. Uh, so is uh, Enrique around? No, pity. I wanted to thank, you, uh, thank him uh, for organizing this. He invited me so many times uh, to Rio, and I never came here. But this was a, it's a great opportunity to come here and speak about uh, my word that I couldn't miss. So whoever th sees him, uh, just say I was thanking him. <coughs> uh, right, so uh, you have the title of uh, my talk. And I should say that this is based on joint works. It's another detail. Uh, with uh, my PhD student, uh, Jonutz Markutz. Jonutz is just... Uh, the way we call him, but his name is Yuan. He just pointed out to me, I should write it properly. Yuan uh, Markutz from Utrecht, uh, joint work with Rui Fernandez from Lisbon, and various discussions with David Martinez Torres. Um, <coughs> I guess this, this somehow. Uh, a place where various stuff that I was doing with Rui uh, comes together. I mean, we started uh, working on a geometric proof of cons linearization theorem, and then we uh, somehow uh, went into a slightly different direction of this uh, stability of symplectic leaves uh, in Poisson geometry, which were, at some point, we thought they were. Uh, really related. I mean, one could use one to prove the other, but it turned out not to be the case. However, uh, what I'm going to talk about, everything, come, everything comes together. So it's somehow uh, <clears throat> the result of a work uh, which started in 2001, if I remember well. Rui. Rui is not around. <clears throat> it started around 2001. <clears throat> And it was, it was actually uh, in Poisson 2008 that uh, Jonutz was coming to, to Utrecht to work as a PhD student. And I mentioned to him uh, what I called back then local rib stability in Poisson geometry. And now became local normal form theorem, although I'm still using local rib stability as, as the driving force for the intuition. And I should also say that at that point, there was uh, the only available proof in the particular case of symplectic leaves, which are points. So Kohn's linearization theorem was the original proof of Kohn, which was uh, yeah, very analytical and so on. So Yonu started already extending that proof. But after a few months, we managed to, find the, to finish our geometric proof with Rui. And then we could just move to the geometric picture and and find the geometric approach to the local form theorem. That doesn't mean that the analytic approach is not uh, interesting. It's, I think it's very interesting. It gives a more powerful result. It's really a rigidity result. Uh, but that, that's still work in progress. Uh, Yanus has two more years to finish that. <clears throat> but what's, what's very nice is the fact that the, the theorem, the outcome, is the same uh, somehow. I mean, the conditions in the theorem, which maybe look surprising at first, uh, are the same, no matter which approach you take. So that's one proof that is the local form theorem. So I, <clears throat> I use the break to put on the blackboard the classical results, right? The, the, the first two are non-Poisson geometric. So the first one is local rib stability. <clears throat> so we start with the foliation f on a manifold m. And you look at the leaf l through a point x. I just fix a uh, base point X uh, for simplicity. And I look at the leaf of this foliation. And now to produce a local uh, uh, normal form for the foliation around the leaf, uh, you need what I like to think of as being the, the first order data around the leaf. So one thing is the universal cover, L tilde of L. And then uh, what also plays a role is the holonomy, or in this case, just the fundamental group of the leaf. And now uh, 
there is a canonical representation coming from the geometry of the foliation by moving around the, the transversal and along the foliation, which is just the normal direction to the, to the leaf. So you take the normal bundle, and that's canonically a representation of the, of the fundamental group. If you don't want to use holonomy, just keep in mind that if you take the, co if you take the normal bundle to the leaf, then the leaf bracket of vector fields actually makes the normal bundle, which is a bundle of over L, makes it into a flat vector bundle. So with respect to this both connection. And this is just the holonomy of that, uh, of that uh, connection. <clears throat> so out of this, you construct the local model, which is you just take a, a copy of L tilde. You parameterize it by, by the normal direction, so times mu x. So on here, you have an obvious foliation whose uh, leaves are L tilde times elements uh, in mu x. And the group gamma acts on, on both uh, terms, and this foliation is equivariant. So it, it goes down to the quotient to a foliation on this local model, which has L as a symplectic leaf corresponding to the case when V is 0. So that's uh, <coughs> the copy of L. And then the famous local leaf stability says that if L is compact and the fundamental group is finite, then around L, M and the local model is, are isomorphic as foliations, as foliated spaces, right? <clears throat> uh, I should also say I'm not stating the, the strongest, uh, I'm not giving the strong, po strongest possible statements, but the ones which are more convenient for, for uh, me for later on. Right, so that's, uh, that's the local rip stability. So I'm moving now to the uh, similar result in equivalent geometry. So you start with a G-manifold this time, and you look at the orbit through a point X. So this is just G times X. So you look at an orbit through the point X, and now the first order data that uh, you have around this orbit is, uh, first of all, the isotropy group of the point, so elements in G which fix X. And then similar to the normal direction, there you have here the normal direction to the orbit, so I call that Vx, and that's a canonical representation of Gx, right? You just differentiate the action of G on M. And then uh, I want to stress, although this, not strictly speaking, needed, I want to stress that there is an analogous bundle, a bundle analogous to the universal cover, which is what I call the orbit bundle. Uh, so G sitting above the orbit as a principal GX bundle. So the structure group of this is the isotropy. <clears throat> and then the local model just looks the same. You take a copy of G, you multiply it with V, and now the isotropy acts on both terms, and the quotient gives you the local model, which has as an orbit <clears throat> corresponding to the zero in the vector space V, it's a copy of my original orbit O, right? And then the theorem says, or a particular case of the theorem says that if G is compact, then around the orbit, M and the local model are isomorphic. Again, of course, it's uh, as G manifolds, right? <clears throat> okay, so that's uh, about the classical theorems, and still a classical theorem, but now goes uh, inside Poisson geometry is Kohn's linearization theorem in which you start with a Poisson manifold, m pi, and with a singular point in, uh, in m. So that's where pi vanishes. And now the, the first order da data determined by this is very simple. It's just, if you think in local coordinates for pi, it's just the partial derivatives of pi ij with respect to xk at the point x. And they just fit nicely into the structure constants of a Lie algebra. But intrinsically, coordinate free, this Lie algebra is just the dual of the tangent space. And thinking of, of these as coming from first jets of functions on M, you have an induced Lie algebra structure in there, coming from the Poisson bracket. So there's the isotropy Lie algebra. And then we know what the local model would be. It's just the, the dual of the Lie algebra with the associated linear Poisson structure. And then the theorem says that if this Lie algebra, so this first order data, is semi-simple of compact type, so SS stands for semi-simple. 
if it's semi-simple of compact type, then around X, M looks like the local model. <coughs> and it's, uh, there is one remark which goes in the direction of trying to make this uh, consignalization theorem look as these other two theorems. So that's, that's the interesting part is first to replace the Lie algebra by the unique one connected Lie group integrating it. Right? So I, I use the notation the Lie group of a Lie algebra is the unique one connected Lie group integrating the Lie algebra. And it, already the if part, right, semi-simple of compact type, starts looking more like in the other theorems because it's equivalent to saying that this group is compact. So those, those are the, the classical theorems. So let me now move to the, to the main theorem and state it, although I still have to explain some of the parts coming inside uh, the theorem. So before the statement, let's see, let's fix uh, the main theorem. <coughs> so I start with M pi as before. I uh, have a point in M, and now I'm going to look at, at what happens around the, the symplectic leaf through the point X. So I make no assumptions on the symplectic leaf. <coughs> Now, there is something here that I'm going to write down. It, it's not going to show up in the, in the statement, but it's an interesting object, which is the isotropy Lie algebra. Uh, well, that was defined there in the case of singular point, but this still makes sense. I mean, what I said there still makes sense. If you look at the, those cotangent vectors, we vanish along S. And that's uh, the isotropy Lie algebra. And uh, what's going to be important in the, in the theorem is what I'm going to call uh, Px is the Poisson homotopy bundle. Right, which is, uh, is completely analogous to the universal cover of a leaf in foliation theory. It's just that being in Poisson geometry, this has the feature of not being a covering, but being a principal bundle. And uh, right, for those which are used to the language of groupoids, this is just the S fiber of the symplectic groupoid of the Poisson manifold about the point X. Anyway, I'll, I'll spend some time explaining this PX. And then the theorem... It has a if part. So if Px is smooth, compact, and the second cohomology group, second Ram cohomology group of it vanishes, then around S, M and the local model let me write LM are isomorphic. <coughs> well, the local model, I still have to say what it is, and there are two ways to approach the, the local model. One which is uh, describe it explicitly. That I'm, that's what I'm going to do in two minutes. But that's not very conceptual. And then there is a, a more conceptual approach which describes the local model as the first order approximation, as the first order approximation of pi along S. So let me write that J1, so first jet along S of pi. So the first jet of pi along S. So that's, uh, that's the theorem. <coughs> and now one can make, uh, one can wonder a bit about uh, at least the assumptions first, because this, su such, such a theorem was searched for, I think, in the literature. 
And if you compare it with the classical theorems, well, I think what was expected for a while was that something like that should hold, but there was no condition on the second cohomology group uh, vanishing. So that's, uh, I guess, uh, what we had to understand first, that there is such a condition showing up for, for the theorem. Which coefficients is R, R, it's the round cohomology. It's the round cohomology. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, then I, I think there was an, an example of uh, Benjamin Davis and Aisa Vade in uh, 2005 which uh, if you modify a little bit, you'll actually find out an example in which everything, everything except this condition is satisfied, but the conclusion does not hold. So it really shows that this uh, condition is, uh, is necessary. I should also say that also an analytic approach to this theorem kind of brings up exactly the same condition on the second cohomology group. In the case of Coase's theorem, then uh, the bundle Px is just this uh, Lie group, and this vanishing of second cohomology group, it's automatic. So you don't see that uh, there. So uh, let me start now explaining the, the, the keywords of the theorem. Oops. So that's number five. That's the local model. So I'm going to give the explicit description, but then uh, the starting point is, so you, for the local model, you start with uh, a symplectic manifold, S omega S, which in this case will be the symplectic leaf, so the symplectic manifold. But this, now it's an arbitrary symplectic manifold. And you start with a principal G bundle over S. So principal G bundle where G is some Lie group, right? So once you have uh, such a starting data, you can produce a, a nice local model, and that's uh, the model I'm going to use. So first of all, as a manifold, it's like, uh, it's like the previous ones. It's just P times G star, where you divide out by the action of the diagonal action of the Lie group G. Now, uh, I can also describe the symplectic leaves right away as manifolds. So as manifolds, the symplectic leaves is something that you see, for instance, in reduction is P times over G, the quadjoint orbit through a point in the dual of the Lie algebra. Or similarly, it's P mod out the isotropy group of Xi. So that's one for each psi in G star. So that's how the symplectic glyphs look like. And now, uh, <coughs> I can try. Let's see. Let's see where we get. Uh, <coughs> now the pos <laughs> That completely spoils my uh, plan of using the blackboard. Yeah. OK. Let's see. Sorry? <laughs> so the Poisson structure. <coughs> so although I can describe intrinsically the symplectic leaves of some, as manifolds, the Poisson structure requires some choice. Uh, namely, you need uh, to choose a connection. What I'm going to think of as a connection one form on the principal bundle. So that's a connection on the principal bundle. <coughs> and then you lift up uh, this uh, connection one form to a one form on what's used to produce the local model. So one form on P times G star, right? And it's the only way you, I mean, if I tell I do this, you'll find out the formula. But let me write down. So theta hat at the point P psi, when applied to a pair of vector fields, that's like a applying theta p to the first vector field, so that gives an element in G, so I eva evaluate it along against psi. So that gives you a one form on p times g star, 
And then uh, using the symplectic form on S, now you put uh, together and define omega to be the pullback by the projection of the symplectic form omega S, and you add up d theta hat. So that's a two form on P times G star. <coughs> uh, which, well, I should have said, is a well-known construction in symplectic geometry. I think the first time I saw it was a paper of, uh, what's his name? In this bo the bundle picture of mechanics. Uh, Montgomery. Montgomery, yeah. But it may be older than that. And anyway, this is a close to form, which uh, it's actually symplectic. around uh, points which have second coordinate uh, vanishing on G star. And uh, it's also basic, so, oh, no, it's not basic. Uh, it's invariant. So being invariant, what you get uh, out of this that is that on the quotient P times G star, or at least in a neighborhood of S in there, Right, S corresponding to the zero in G star, uh, this will be a Poisson manifold. We'll have an induced Poisson structure. <coughs> and I'm talking about these kind of Poisson structures as my local models. And I should also say that, yeah, we're only interested in the neighborhood of S. So from that point of view, if you change the connection, you get another Poisson structure, but which is Poisson diffeomorphic to this one. So it doesn't depend on the choices uh, from that point of view. And if you have not seen this before, let me just give one example. I'll try to fit it on the upper part here. Uh, so that's when G is just a torus, right? So when G is a torus, and P is an arbitrary principal TQ bundle. So what does it happen for the local model. Well, the local model that I constructed as a manifold, now because TQ is a, a billion, as a manifold is just a S times RQ. Now, the symplectic leaves, again, if you look at what was on the blackboard before, is just copies of S. So it's S times T, 14 RQ. So what's the role of the bundle? Well, the bundle tells me what the class of Poisson structure I have to consider. So namely, the Poisson bundle, the, 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 the bundle P is a TQ bundle. So we know that up to isomorphism is determined by its uh, Q channel classes. So it's determined by Q C1 up to CQ cohomology classes, integral cohomology classes, the cohomology of S. Now, the role of the connection is to choose representatives. Uh, so using a connection, what you choose is representatives of this. So it's sigma 1 up to sigma q, which will be just some closed forms on S. Right? And now with this, I can write down what the Poisson structure is. I mean, it's a regular Poisson structure because all the leaves are copies of S. So to tell you what the Poisson structure is, I have to tell you the symplectic leaves, well, the symplectic forms on the leaves. So I have to tell you a symplectic form omega t for each t in RQ. And that's just the symplectic form of S plus t1 sigma 1 plus tq sigma q. So somehow the role of the bundle is to encode, at least in this case, the, the variations of the family of symplectic forms. So I think it's a pretty simple model that, oh, I should have said that people used to call these linear uh, models, but I, I'll try avoiding that word. It's more like a fine. Right. So, now in the main theorem, well, that will be the local model with uh, the principal bundle, this Poisson homotopy bundle. So that's... Uh, what I'm going to explain next. Uh, 
I made a plan of using the blackboard, but I know everything was turned down by not being using, able to use that part. So take out cons linearization here. So that's uh, the Poisson bundle. Right, and the, the, this, if you want a more conceptual way of constructing this, uh, of understanding this bundle, PX. So the idea, well, I could use the language of groupoids and so on, but there is a nice idea that has been used uh, by Molino, Almeida, in foliation theory and so on, and it's very intuitive, so I'll follow their approach. So the idea is that a principal G bundle, so if you had a principal G bundle, P over S, it will induce an infinitesimal data that you could hope to use to recover the bundle. And the infinitesimal data is what's known as uh, the Atia sequence of the principal bundle. So that's the AS, so that's not Atia Zinger, but Atia sequence. of the principal bundle, which is just, is basically the tangent bundle of P mod out by the action of the group G, which you fit into a short exact sequence of vector bundles over S, so that's a vector bundle over S, and it fits into a short exact sequence where the kernel is just P times G star divided out by the action of G. I think the origin of these sequences is that you can interpret uh, connections on the principal bundle of splittings of this sequence. But uh, <laughs> there's this kind of uh, sequence in which the important part is the middle part, is a vector bundle over S. And uh, what's also important is the structure that it carries. So the, the structure, well, it's a Lie bracket on the space of sections, right? Because space of sections are invariant vector fields on P, which is closed under the Lie bracket. So at the end, if you remember these lectures by Ike Murdoch, that precisely means that this is a transitive Lie algebra. Right? And some people uh, prefer to not to use these terms. So that's uh, like Molino and Almeida. They, call these object transitive Lie algebraids, they call them abstract Atia sequences. <clears throat> right, so these, uh, these are just transitive Lie algebraids which do not necessarily come from a principal bundle. And uh, the point is that the bundle that we have in our main theorem arises very naturally through the infinitesimal data, through the Atia sequence, and that's something very simple. So now if you start with uh, the Poisson manifold M pi, then you just produce such an abstract Atia sequence, which is uh, the restriction of the cotangent bundle of M to S. So that goes to TS, and the kernel is the conormal bundle to the leaf. Right, so T star M S is just a restriction of T star M to S. Uh, right, so since we deal with a Poisson manifold, we know this is an algebraid, and when you restrict to a leaf, this is a transitively algebraid. So that's an abstract Atia sequence. Abstract Atia sequence. So if you want, the assumption in the theorem that Px is smooth is the same thing as asking that this abstract Atia sequence comes from a principal bundle. So Px smooth is equivalent to this star uh, coming from a principal bundle. And the bundle will be precisely Px. There is only one bundle which is simply connected and that's what the Px will be. So that's uh, one way to approach it. And here I want to make a remark, which I, I, so that's 
something that Yonus remarked, and it's very, I find it very cute, although it's very simple. The fact that this is really the first order data, uh, this encodes the first jet of pi along the symplectic leaf. So if you just try to see what's, what would be the first jet of pi along the symplectic leaf, well, then what you look at are multi-vector fields on M, which are tangent to S, right? So if you look at this uh, graded Lie algebra of multi-vector fields on M, which are tangent to S, so the restriction to S is a multi-vector field on S. <coughs> so to produce first jets, you have to consider this ideal of functions which uh, the smooth functions on M which vanish along S. So that's uh, F is infinity of M with F restricted to S equals zero. And that, then the first jet, so let me adopt this as an ad hoc notation. So J1 along S of X dot of M, so first jets along S of multivector fields for me will be by definition uh, the quotient x s dot of m divided out by the square of the ideal times the module. The standard way of producing algebraically jets. <coughs> right, and then the, the, the map which takes a bivector into its first jet is just the quotient map. From x dot s of m, you have the quotient map that I'm going to call j1 s. Right, and now the nice part, is, the nice fact is that this uh, Lie bracket of multi-vector fields that we have a multi-vector fields, right, uh, goes down to the quotient, right, and that's important because it, that's how we make sense of a bivector being Poisson. So this will be a, a graded Lie algebra. And we're interested in this case uh, on the symplectic leaf. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to fix uh, the sim uh, symplectic form omega s on s. And then I can uh, also, when I have elements in here which are like first jets of Poisson bivectors, I can restrict uh, to, the, to the leaf because of the condition uh, of being tangent to the leaf. So these always restrict to multi-vector fields on s. So I can wonder now which are the elements whose associated bivector on S is a given symplectic form, well, or its inverse. <coughs> now, I already have this sequence here, so let me point out that this is a sequence of vector bundles only uses the symplectic form. Right. I have this sequence of vector bundles. If I have a manifold M and a, a sub-manifold S with a symplectic form omega S. So the, the, if you want the lemma is that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between first jets of Poisson structures, if you want. So it's elements in J1 S X 2 of M satisfying tau bracket tau equals zero, and the restriction to S is the inverse of omega S. So really first jets of Poisson structures, if you want. So that's in one-to-one -one correspondence with uh, structures of abstract Atiyah sequences on, on this sequence star. And that's, uh, if you think a bit about the, the statement, the, the proof is pretty simple. But I think it's re rewarding, uh, right? You understand that this really, uh, the, if you want the algebraic or geometric structure, which encodes the first order jet of the bivector along the symplectic leaf. OK. So what I want to do next now is to, to, to go to the other interpretation of uh, the Poisson bundle, which is more explicit, if you want, and which is really closer to what happens for 
foliations. And then probably everybody is familiar with this uh, kind of construction. So let me just go fast over it. So nine, the Poisson bundle. Uh, part two. I, should call, I could call it part zero. <clears throat> so it's just this idea that is uh, familiar to everyone working in uh, Poisson geometry of uh, contravariant geometry. In which uh, you replace the classical tangent bundle by the cotangent bundle of uh, the Poisson manifold and you use its uh, structure of Lee algebra. So according to that point of view, the, it's well known that the right notion of paths in Poisson geometry are cotangent paths. Right, which are just paths. Well, it's a path in M, which follows from the second part, but I want to write it separately. We together with a path gamma hat in T star M sitting above gamma. So it's a classical pattern, somehow a lift, uh, such that uh, if you apply pi, or the bundle map induced by pi, pi sharp, to gamma hat, then you get d gamma over dt. So the relation between gamma hat and the usual derivative is via pi. <clears throat> and there is also the notion of cotangent homotopy, which I'm, I'll skip today. And then <coughs> this Poisson bundle is really the analog of the universal cover of a, of a leaf, but in this context of Poisson geometry. So Px is just a cotangent paths starting at x. So meaning that gamma of 0 equals x, mod out by the cotangent homotopy. <coughs> and uh, also the structure group you can uh, now construct like this. So these are just cotangent loops. Starting, well, at x, mod out by the cotangent homotopy. So that's something that we like to, to think of, and we call it the Poisson homotopy group of M at the point X. So there's the Poisson homotopy group. At X. It's just that there is no longer a discrete group. It's, uh, in the interesting case, it's really a Lie group. But anyway, what, what the outcome is, is uh, at least a topological GX bundle. at least topologically. <coughs> so now if you go to the usual construction of the universal cover of a manifold, well, usual, one of the construction of the universal cover of a manifold, as a manifold, and my favorite reference is again the book of Dauster, Martin Kolk, where they work it uh, in detail, then you see you, you can just do the same in this case to and you can talk about the topology on this bundle and about the smooth structure on the bundle if it exists. The problem is that it may fail to be smooth. There is a natural candidate which comes as a quotient from the manifold structure on the space of cotangent paths, but it may not exist. So that's now the meaning of Px being smooth, right? So let me just mention a few things about the smooth case. So this is for the more technical part of the blackboard. So in the smooth case, uh, quite a few things uh, can be said. So that's part 10, the smooth case. So when this bundle is smooth, then of course also the Lie group GX is smooth. So what happens is that, uh, so if P 
Px smooth, <coughs> then this Lie group uh, Gx is actually just an integration of the Lie algebra of the isotropy Lie algebra that I wrote on the beginning, right? the isotropy Lie algebra of the Poisson manifold. So the Lie algebra of Gx is precisely the isotropy Lie algebra. But it's different from the unique simply connected integration in general. But Gx is different from G of Gx. <coughs> right. And you, you see that already by, it's even disconnected in general. If you, if you look at this bundle, and if you write the log exact sequence in homotopy, so let's uh, write uh, the start of it. So you'll have pi 2 of the group, so that's uh, 0. So pi 2 of Px goes to pi 1 of Gx. This is the fiber. So then it goes to pi 1 of Px, which is trivial. And then it goes to pi 1 of S, goes to pi 0 of Gx, and to 1. So that's uh, part of the long exact sequence in homotopy for this bundle. So you already see that uh, <coughs> pi 0 of Gx is isomorphic to pi 1 of the symplectic leaf. So that's one, one thing. But even more, you can, you can say even more, kind of construct the group Gx out of this picture. So first of all, Gx integrating the Lie algebra, uh, the isotropy Lie algebra implies that this pi 1 of Gx sits naturally inside this simply connected Lie group integrating the, the Lie algebra Gx. It's inside the center. And this doesn't quite, I lost, uh, didn't I lose something? Where is the base? Pi 2 of S. Here it was pi 1. I two of px one. <coughs> right, and this this map from pi two of s to pi one of gx that I'm going to call partial, but viewed as a map into this Lie group uh, integrating the Lie algebra. That's a pretty important map, <coughs> and that's important also because it doesn't involve the principal bundle. It doesn't uh, require at least to say that it's a map from there to there, it doesn't require the principal bundle Px. And it's a fact that it can be described without the bundle Px. Anyway, in the smooth case, then we can say that the connected component of the identity of uh, Gx is just the quotient of the simply connected Lie group divided out by the image of this map partial. So you can construct it... Uh, like that. <coughs> and even more, since there is a condition which the, with the second uh, Durham cohomology group of Px, you see this, this sequence gives you as a bonus uh, the pi 2 of Px as the kernel of partial. <coughs> and let me write this uh, down as a remark. So that's what I said. The fact that partial so if you have a symplectic manifold, <coughs> sorry, if you have a Poisson manifold, a symplectic leaf S, you can just construct without any of, of this uh, stuff I mentioned with Px and so on. You can construct this map from pi 2 of S to the simply connected Lie group integrating the Lie algebra Gx. So this can be constructed directly. So. And that's uh, the stuff I've been doing with Rui, I think, seven, eight years ago, uh, really trying to understand this map. So it can be constructed directly, and moreover, it controls the, the smoothness of this bundle. So that's an integrability criteria, which says that Px is smooth if and only if Gx is smooth, and if and only if the image of this map partial is discrete. 
и за дисклик subgroup. So that's uh, something interesting about this map, which can really be computed uh, uh, in example. And this is kind of, at least in one direction, expected, right? From this description of the connected component identity, it's a quotient by a subgroup, which is at most countable. It better be discrete to get something smooth. Right. So let me use this now uh, to discuss a bit the if part of the theorem. <coughs> so uh, <coughs> you see this if part of the theorem makes, I mean, it's, it's very short somehow. Px has to be smooth compact vanishing uh, second Betty number. <coughs> But Px may be difficult to compute uh, in some examples. So you can actually rewrite the if part uh, of the theorem in terms of these maps partial, which, well, they may look a bit more involved, but they are really more computable in examples. So that's the if part. <coughs> so let me copy again the if part here. So I'm going to break it in, into several parts. So one is that Px is smooth. The other one is that Px is compact. And the other one is that the second cohomology group vanishes. So first of all, that's equivalent. So we can get rid of the bundle and just use the Poisson homotopy group, this structure group Gx. So if I rephrase it in terms of Gx, Px smooth is equivalent to Gx being smooth then the compactness of Px, it's about S being compact and Gx being compact. <coughs> and this uh, second cohomology group, now if you lo look at the, uh, show the exact sequence that I wrote and you play a bit around, you see that that precisely says that the dimension of the center of this Lie algebra has to be equal with, uh, how to write, Let's, let me write this with the pi 2. So rank of pi 2 of s. <coughs> so that's, uh, that's how the condition looks like. And then if you want to go further and get out uh, something without the use of the group uh, gx, then you'll have to use this monodromy map but anyway, the outcome will be a uh, collection of conditions, which is one is that S is compact with uh, finite pi 1. So that's exactly like the condition in local rip stability, right? Uh, the Lie algebra GX is of compact type. <coughs> but it doesn't have to be semi-simple. Actually, it's not semi-simple unless S is a, is a symplectic leaf. So actually, what has to hold is the dimension of the center of Gx is the second Betty number of S. <coughs> so dimension of H2 of S. And then the, the smoothness condition, yeah, let's say the, how should I write this? Nx is a, well, I have to write that is a lattice in the center of Gx. <clears throat> so, well, Nx is the uh, monodromy group of the foliation. So, that's, if you want, this is basically the image of partial, but the image of partial is inside the center of this. Now, the center of that is almost the center of the Lie algebra, if you take the connected component of the identity. So, if I intersect with the connected component of the identity, I get this group which sits inside Z of Gx. So that has to be a lattice. And that's, uh, if you want, possible reformulations of the conditions of the theorem. <coughs> and it's kind of interesting to, <coughs> to stare a bit of this condition, also with the mind of the fact that there have been various attempts to prove such a local uh, form theorem, but then the assumptions 
kind of went wrong in two places. So first of all, as I said, H2 of Px being zero was not there, and that's really needed. But then there was this impression that what you have to ask is that this isotropy Lie algebra is semi-simple of compact type, like in Kohn's theorem. I want to make that very clear. That's the wrong assumption. I mean, it's, you see, this with the dimension of the center tells me that the theorem has GX semi-simple of compact type only when S is a, is a point. Right? So I think that's one explanation of why all these attempts failed, because that was the starting assumption for, uh, <coughs> for what they tried to prove. Now there are some, uh, I think I'll, yeah, I'll not get to the proofs at all. Well, the proof is quite, <coughs> to take me some, quite some time. But, um, <coughs> Yeah, I was looking at uh, how these previous Poisson conferences went and what, what I talked about. So I, I saw this, there is some regularity in my talks. Once I give a talk in which I spend 25 seconds with the statement and then the rest with the proof, or I give a talk where I just explain the statement and no proof. So last time was just proofs, this time it's just statements. Also, we are in Rio, so Ivan is telling me in Rio, take, in Rio people take it easy somehow. <laughs> I mean, I, if I went to Sao Paulo, I would probably just write directly the, the statement and let's look at the proof then. Uh, let's see my planning with the blackboard. But anyway, I think now you have all, all the data uh, for the main theorem, right? So you have the statement, the two explanations of the Poisson bundle, and then the if part, uh, let's formulate it. So let me go... Uh, to some examples. <laughs> well, first of all, there are some uh, baby examples, but they are kind of interesting. So already, when you take the dual of a Lie algebra, the statement is non-trivial, right? If you <coughs> and you. Right, when you look at a, uh, an element in G star psi and you are looking uh, at a quadjoint orbit, that's the symplectic leaf. <coughs> so in, uh, let's see, first of all, I, I should say that the conditions in the theorem are satisfied if G is semi-simple of compact type, <coughs> but not in general. Of course, the, the, main, the conclusion of the theorem, you, you may say, well, it may still hold, because it's such a simple uh, uh, Poisson structure, but it doesn't, right? So actually, even in this case, these kind of assumptions uh, on compactness and so on have to hold, and that's, there is a cheap way to see that, because if the conclusion of the theorem holds, it follows that the transversal Poisson structure to the leaf is linearizable. So you just go to this uh, collection of papers of counterexamples, starting with one small note by Alan, uh, where you find these examples, I think, of really semi-simple Lie algebras for which uh, the conclusion of the theorem could not hold. But if it's semi-simple of compact type, then you see this Px is just the Lie group G integrating the Lie algebra G. So the the assumptions would, well, yeah, that's Px, just the Lie group. And then the assumptions are auto automatically satisfied. Um, right, but still, uh, if you look at the local model, so that's uh, maybe nice to, to have in mind. Uh, yeah, that looks exactly like... Uh, in the slice theorem as a manifold. So like in slice theorem. Right, so somehow what we, what we do is take the slice theorem and put an interesting Poisson structure on there for the local model. Uh, another example would come from uh, the regular case. So if you have m pi, and x is regular, 
then, well, already then these conditions are not automatically satisfied. So the, the theorem becomes something with some serious conditions. But it's, what is nice to remark is that in the, under the assumptions of the theorem, then this Px is a Gx zero bundle over the universal cover of the symplectic leaf. I mean, this, this should be clear from what I discussed on this more technical part. But it, once you have the, if you take that for granted, then you see that the local model is Px times Gx, Gx star as a manifold, as actually as a foliated manifold, is just S tilde times over gamma, the conormal direction. So that's like in rib stability. So that's like in local rib. <coughs> so I think I have two more minutes to give you an example which is about this condition H2 of P being zero. <coughs> well, I have two examples, but I only have time for one. So one example is kind of nice because it's general and you really see how H2 comes in. But I'll, I'll give the other example because it's somehow more explicit. Uh, and it's the example which comes from, uh, it's a variation of the examples given by uh, by Isavad and Benjamin Davis. So, in that example, you start with uh, the Poisson manifold, which is S2 times R3. Now, S2 is a symplectic manifold, right? So that's the Poisson structure I put in there. And it's a symplectic manifold with a symplectic form just, I'm gonna write it down to specify the coordinates I'm using. I'm using coordinates u, v, and w. And on R3, I'm, I'm considering the linear Poisson structure, which comes from the identification of R3 which the, with the dual of SO3. So uh, I have then the induced linear Poisson structure, pi lin, and then I use the coordinates x, y, and z. So it's x partial y partial z. <coughs> so put them together into the product you get a Poisson structure by zero on M. <clears throat> and here it's very simple to compute everything because it's just a product and there is no interaction between the terms, right? So the symplectic leaves, <clears throat> there's not gonna be the example, but this is the starting point for the example. So the symplectic leaves are just products of the symplectic leaves of the two. So it's S2 on the left-hand side times the origin with the symplectic form omega S2. And you have these other concentric spheres coming on R3, so that's S2 times S2R, with the symplectic form, which is omega S2 plus omega R, where omega R, uh, so I'm gonna write it here, is just a rescale of uh, the canonical symplectic form, but viewed on SR, so it's one over R, sum of X, dy, dz. <coughs> so these are the symplectic leaves. And I wanna look uh, at the theorem in the case of the symplectic leaves being this uh, singular one. So let's uh, take it as S. <coughs> and then you can uh, compute everything, right? So S is S2 times zero, it's S2. Then the, the, the principal bond is gonna, gonna be trivial. Well, it's gonna be the product coming from the left-hand side with the one coming from R3 around the origin, which is the uh, simply connected Lie group integrating SO3. So what you get is just the product S2 times spin three. Trivial as a bundle. And the Poisson homotopy group is just the obvious thing then. So you can compute all this stuff. Okay, if you try to, well, let's see, all the conditions of the theorem are satisfied except for H2 of Px being zero. So this has H2 different from zero. 
Nevertheless, the, the conclusion of the theorem holds. I mean, such a simple example, uh, M will be diffeomorphic to the local model. However, what we can do is change this pi without changing its first jet. So, take pi, so our pi zero was just pi s2 plus pi lin. So if I want uh, to keep the first jet along s, so that's when uh, x, y, z are zero, I'm just adding one plus x squared plus y squared plus z squared. I'm adding a Casimir with respect to pi lin to get the Poisson structure. So if I do this, all the local data is going to stay the same. The conditions of the theorem will be like for the pi zero. So still, the condition h too different from zero is uh, not satisfied. If the conclusion of the theorem would hold for pi, it means that pi and pi zero are simply homomorphic around S. And we just look to see whether that's possible or not. And uh, you look at the symplectic leaves of this. So this has symplectic leaves. Besides the, the, the non-regular one, you have the regular ones, which is the same as manifold, S2 times S2R, with symplectic form 1 over one plus, and let me call this capital R, square omega S2 plus omega capital R, just using another radius there. So here I have some symplectic manifolds, star small r, and here I have star capital R. <coughs> so now you just uh, Try to see, is, is it possible that for any small r there is a capital R for which these two are symplectomorphic? And you compute the symplectic volumes. So you compute symplectic, for instance, there are many ways to close these arguments. So symplectic volumes together with integration along cycles, because uh, pi 2 is very simple in this case. What you get out is that each r is a solution of an equation of, well, let me just keep it short, of an algebraic equation. An algebraic, right, refers to the fact that coefficients are integers, and the fact that you get integer coefficients comes from the fact that any symplectomorphism you go to pi 2, it will just be, will send a generator to a, linear span of the other two generators with integer coefficients. So that's uh, impossible. So the conclusion is that for, for this pi, all the assumptions of the theorem are satisfied except this condition, and the conclusion is not satisfied. Sorry, I'm two minutes over time, so I'll stop here. Thank you.